Hi guys, so here at the London Concourse at the Honourable Artillery Company, one of the key brands that they're celebrating here today is Lotus, as you can see behind me. So let's take a closer look at some of the models on display. So we'll kick off with one of my all-time favorite cars. Of course, it is the Lotus Esprit. I hope you can hear me above the the conversation that's taking place on the tannoy here at the London Concourse. Um, they're doing interviews and stuff. The event is a three-day event, and as you can see, there's a ton of great cars. But we are going to look at this Esprit. I think I've seen this Esprit before, actually, at a previous event. I think I've actually sat in this particular car. This is a 1985 model. It was built in 1984 and it's had every factory option that you could possibly get fitted to it. Unique all over white out paint finish, lift out targa tinted glass at the top. Now the owner um, has been sourcing period accessories. So I've definitely seen this because I think they were displayed with the car last time. And he's got a whole bunch of JPS stuff because JPS obviously was the sponsor of the Lotus F1 team at the time. This thing also has all the original factory labels. It's only covered 2000 miles from new it is absolutely resplendent it's absolutely factory fresh look at it it's just absolutely gorgeous and i think you can tell from my voice that i want one of these and there's a fish and those of you that know the esprit and know it from the Bond movie, The Spy Who Loved Me, will completely get that reference, but that's a really nice and uh, quite funny touch, actually. What a beauty. Let's see what else they've got here. So right next to the Esprit is this Lotus Elite 1982 model. And what's unique about this car is that it's the Elite Riviera. The Elite uh, was built between 1974 and 1980. Uh, Lotus made just over 2,000 Series 1 2-litre cars with 132 Series 2 2.2-litre models built between 80 and 83. Now, the very final version had the option of a detachable Riviera roof at a cost of £325, and you can see that on the top here. And so this Riviera is one of those last examples. Only seven Rivieras were built by Lotus, and this is the only version that was finished in black. Looks pretty cool. I've always liked these, not as much as the Esprit, but it's got a very unique shape. That must be the owner. What a lucky chap. Next to it, of course, is the Lotus Europa. Now, I used to have a model car of this, which I absolutely loved. I don't know what happened to it. It was a black one with gold stripe. Now, this has got gold pinstripings on this, but this is quite a unique uh, color. It's sort of a bread van type of car, if you look at the back of it. They uh, revealed this in 1966, and uh, it was uh, one of the few mid-engine uh, sports cars available at the time. Uh, and, you know, it was a bit weird. They had the same folded steel backbone chassis, glass fiber body on the car, Renault 16 engine and transaxle. The powertrain was front to back in this car. This 1972 car has been fully restored to the standard spec. It was restored in 2008 using a new Lotus galvanized chassis and it's been owned by the present keeper since 1999. So this is kind of the precursor to the Esprit if you like and you know some of it uh, some of its underpinnings, I think, were shared with that car. But what a thing. The Lotus Elan was a great car. I remember driving this back in, I think it was 91 or 1990 at the Lotus factory on the Lotus test track. And uh, one of the best handling front wheel drive cars ever and certainly of its day. But I don't know if that will ever become a classic. This certainly will. Um, I, to be fair, I think the new Elan would become a classic, but uh, not at the moment, I don't think. But this, I think, is in its final year of production. The Elise was a great car. This is a 1988 S1 example. And uh, it's basically a 10,000 mile car that's owned by Lotus. The car was launched at the 1995 Frankfurt Motor Show. And, uh, you know, it's regarded as one of, you know, the best handling and best driving cars ever. I would own an Elise, definitely. I might probably go for an S2 or maybe an S3 with a Toyota engine, a bit more reliable. But even this would be amazing. You know, they do actually do uh, conversions with the S1 and S2 to Honda Type R engines, which I think... Uh, would be fantastic but yeah this is a great example of the car and these are definitely going to be classic so 
basic inside, utterly brilliant. Really, really good. I know what you're thinking, that's a Caterham. Well, it's not a Caterham. This is actually a real Lotus 7. This is a 7 Lotus 7 S2 from 1965. And Lotus produced these between um, 1957 and 1972. And then the rights were in fact sold to Caterham that continue to make them pretty much identical to the way they look here to this day. Uh, this has got the, uh, what do they call this, the flying wings or whatever? The longer wings. I prefer the, the, the shorter ones, the bicycle rings, wings, because then you can actually see the uh, front wheels from the driver's seat. Um, like the Elan and the S1, I have driven Caterhams, although not an original Lotus 7, but I don't think that I would fit in it. And if you're thinking um, that this looks a lot like the prisoner car, it was built, I think, uh, in the same year as that one, the one that was uh, featured in The Prisoner. Um, this has been subjected to a full nut and bolt rebuild in 2018 on the original chassis. It's powered by 1.5 litre Cosworth Ford uh, engine with twin Webers. There you go. Registered in 1965. Check it out. Now this 1973 Lotus Land Sprint is not part of the Lotus display, but I've got to include it. Some of you will have seen this because this one belongs to Harry Metcalf and he's featured it in some of his videos. So that's a beautiful example of the car and you know that he uses it, that's for sure. And uh, there is actually quite a few of his cars here because he's the chosen collector at the London Concourse event here for 2021 and you can see that um, the project date behind that is car but I'm going to walk past the project date and show you the second white lotus this is 87 of course and this was featured by him in a couple of his videos he has very well used this car and uh, good on him and I am so glad to see it in action it's a perfect example of an Esprit Turbo I think it's one of the ideal examples of the car and he's even taken it to the location of the filming of the uh, one of the Bond movies and so this is an 87 Turbo S3 8C um, and that's definitely the one to have. It's for your eyes only isn't it the one I'm thinking of. That was a copper coloured car um, although originally the car was white at the beginning of the movie before it was blown up then it was rebuilt and painted copper so that it would stand out against the icy surrounds, the snowy surrounds but uh, yeah this is a beautiful example and uh, oh look at that What an awesome thing. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you're subscribing to youtube.com forward slash brown car guy and hit the bell icon and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Whilst you're at it, subscribe to browncarguy.com and follow me on social media by just searching for my hashtag that's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even on TikTok. If you love my content, then please consider sponsoring and supporting it. And you can do that over at patreon.com forward slash brown car guy. And you know what? You can use my platforms to promote your product, service, or brand. My YouTube channel is now closing in on 3,000 subscribers as I record this. Total views are nearly 500,000 and the reach just over the last month is nearly 1 million. So join these amazing people as my patrons, including Muhammad Umaid in the UAE, Partha in India, a tech guru and social media consultant, find him on parthans.com, Tom Conway Gordon here in the UK, Isaac Beauchard in the US, he's got some great deals on cool cars at bespokeautos.com, Reza Adil, check him out at Alizade Cigars on Instagram, Mohammed Ghassan, business consultant, you can find him at wehms.com. Siraj Abbasi at Tiles Italia on Instagram for luxury floor and wall tiling. Mark Waddell in Canada. Zach Cogliani, a globe trotting pilot with amazing images for sale at zachcogliani.com. And last but not least, my school champ Shahir Haki. Thanks for watching. More cool vids on the way. Catch you again in the next one.